Can you believe that we live in a country where kids are going to school unable to say their own names, use the toilet properly or even hold a cup? And then on top of that, on top of the fact they're basically dribbling toddlers, they then have to be confronted by the LGBTQ+, or as I call it anyway, the transgender agenda. Otherwise, their school will be marked down by Ofsted, literally. What are our priorities here? People have got so used to the state controlling their lives that they're not taking responsibility for running their own homes or for raising their own kids. Why didn't you put trousers on today before you came to work? Well, I'll tell you what, the government didn't tell me to. And of course, I'm totally hopeless, so I can't think for myself anymore. I mean, that's what people might as well say. I mean, for goodness sake, I'm sorry. But if a five-year-old can't say his own name or use the toilet properly, then ultimately, and we can't get around this, ultimately, it is the parents' fault. But I'm also very doubtful about whether or not they can make their mind up about being taught about whether or not they're born into the right body, for example. A report last week in The Telegraph revealed that a lack of teaching of, quote, gender identity and gender diversity played a part in the downgrading of two primary schools in 2019 and 2020 by Ofsted inspectors. We're witnessing a hat-trick of disaster, ladies and gentlemen. Poor or negligent parenting, the devastating impact of lockdowns on early years learning and a frankly absurd overemphasis on woke ideology in classrooms, enabled, by the way, by messy equalities legislation and, and something the Education Secretary is currently battling with. But just look at some of these damning, damning, damning revelations in The Times to boot. Quotes now. A head teacher from Nottinghamshire said that her school spent little time on literacy or numeracy in reception because it had to focus on basic care. Some four- and five-year-old children joined reception class unable to say their own names and having drunk only from baby bottles. One child, get this, was brought to school in a shopping trolley. Yeah, I know. Another school, they reported that a child had to undergo extensive physiotherapy because they had spent so much time in front of the telly they didn't have the strength in their legs to walk around the school, for goodness sake. This may be an extreme example, but as a YouGov poll of teachers by the early years charity Kindred Squared found, nearly half of pupils starting in reception were not deemed ready for school. And that was in 2020. That's up 35% from the previous year. Now, the impacts on those children whose parents have sent them to school well-equipped to learn must be considerable. The people who've done a good job of parenting now are being disadvantaged, so are their kids, by the ones who, frankly, couldn't be bothered. We're currently facing a financial crisis that was caused largely by the pandemic, but like anything, there's a bit of a lag, isn't there, between action and reaction, between input and output. So we locked up a generation of children. We stopped their socialisation. We stopped their early years development. We masked them up. We muzzled them. And now we're witnessing children who can't say their own name. We created a nanny state where people don't have to take responsibility for their own actions. And now we see parents who devolve even the most basic elements of their children's education to their children's teachers. And then when those children get to that school, some of them, as this report shows, are brought there in a shopping trolley asking for bot-bot instead of a drink, yeah? They're forced to learn about gender identity. What a mad world we live in. What a crazy world. What an upside-down world. When you really think about it, children are our future, aren't they? Literally. And they're being let down by adults. People like you and me, they are being let down by adults who are supposed to look after them at home. Adults who are supposed to look after them in government. Adults who are supposed to look after them at school. And to be honest, I find it hard to tell who the dribbling, inconsonant, brain-dead idiots actually are. Is it the children or those who are supposed to be looking after them? If we're not careful, we'll lose an entire generation.